Welcome everyone to another episode of Alex Means Business, where we interview local business owners about their story and their community. In this episode, we're gonna have Chris here from Mind's Eye. So Chris, what do you guys do? Well, in a word, toys, we sell toys. <laughs> well, not just any toys, right? You have a, a big, diverse types of toys. We deal in like uh, art toys, designer toys, yeah. as some people like to call it. Um, but in general, we it's it's toys to most people. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And how long have you guys been doing this for? This is my tenth year in this location, but I think in total, about twelve years. Twelve years. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So. Tell me more about, or, and the audience, about more about you, like before Mind's Eye, like what made you want to do this? Like, you know, cause not every, I don't see a lot of toy stores popping up, right? Not like real estate agents, <laughs> so tell me more. There's tons of them, actually. <laughs> There's tons of them. Before this, I've had a, I, I had a pretty well diverse uh, background. I was uh, doing like uh, com computer sales, retail sales, marketing. Um, and just just before this, um, I used to work at like a telecommunications company, yeah. doing lots of like back end like programming work and stuff like that. What sparked the idea of Mind's Eye? Like, what was it? Is it because you're just so into toys? I sort of have like a deep appreciation for art and yeah. design from like previous uh, jobs and yeah. people that I've met. Yeah. And what we used to do is we used to write a lot about like just that sort of art culture. I'd go to galleries and yeah. talk about the artists and stuff like that. And then along the way, because the Bear Bricks, yeah. um, a toy line that I sell, they're art toys. Yeah. And I sort of fell in love with that the most out of everything. Yeah. And uh, you gotta know that like, you know, this is just a thing for fun. I had a day job and stuff like that. So it was just sort of a thing that I dabbled in. Um, but eventually I wanted to do it so much that yeah. I, it just grew bigger and bigger and bigger. And yeah. then I did more, uh, uh, more more toy sales. I went to different shows and stuff like that. Right. So it, just, it just blew up. So out of all the different cities and municipalities, why did you choose Markham? Um, well, I live in Markham. So what happened was I used to live upstairs, yeah. like in a condo, two bedroom apartment upstairs. Yeah. And that's where we started our company. Yeah. But then uh, I still remember it on Labor Day. My buddy called me. I was at home just playing Xbox, Nintendo. Yeah. Um, and he called me downstairs to come look at this unit that uh, just became free. I went downstairs and then 10 minutes later, I was a store owner. So it was sort of yeah. weird in that way. So what would you say, are there any unique aspects of the Markham community that has led, you know, Mind's Eye's growth? There is a large Asian community and yeah. that community does love the uh, whole toys and stuff like that. Um, they're definitely more attuned to it and just a lot mm -hmm. of cute things like anime and stuff like yeah. that influences. But in general, uh, not really. I mean, there's no reason that I must stay here yeah. in Markham. I stay here because I want to stay here because I want to become like a pillar, yeah. you know, in the community. Um, it's just, yeah. I love the city and yeah. this is where I live and where I am and so I want to be here. Absolutely. And you also have another location too, don't you? Well, we used to have one downtown, but yeah. uh, okay. right now we don't. We are actively looking to Probably expand, places. so exactly. it, it's going to happen again. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, man. I know the last time we chatted, you know, we kind of talked about, you know, the yeah. growth of Mind's Eye, right? Yeah. Like first, first off, actually not everybody knows this, right? So when you first started and I met you, you only had one location right like one one actual unit and now you just expand it into the second one yeah this right? used to just be just be this <laughs> this location right here like with arms wide Close. and then we <laughs> yeah. yeah and then yeah. we yeah. uh yeah. then we took over this side over here yeah and uh you yeah. know we we put the arch through the arch. there's two different yeah. landlords so I had to ask permission in order <laughs> yeah, yeah. for us to break the wall down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now it's expanded to three units. And uh, yeah, that's cool. Who knows? Maybe we'll expand again. <laughs> Cause, another yeah. Because I remember I was here talking to you as you were painting the place too, right? Oh, oh my yeah, yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, I. A lot of it is literal blood, sweat, and tears. Um, okay. 
doing it all on my own and yeah. um, it means a lot to me. I know you guys have community events and stuff like that, right? So can you yeah. tell us more about that? Yeah, so we do trading parties all the time. So yeah. the trading parties let the toy collectors and that toy community get together and just yeah. have fun. Well, um, we don't we don't make anything on the trading party. We just want to bring people together so that yeah. they can like exchange and you can literally walk in with like a bunch of toys just yeah garbage collecting dust in the basement yeah. and walk out with all new things. That's, That's sort cool. of what I want to happen mm -hmm. uh, for people. Because, um, you know, there's an old saying, it's very cliche, but it's somebody's tr trash is somebody Come else's on. treasure, right? So <laughs> yeah. that's no. what it is, yeah. No, that's a pretty cool. So is there any like artists that you guys follow that you kind of support and they kind of work together? <clears throat> like just, I know toys is very diverse, right? There's lots of different artists um, in yeah. creating anime or just different characters, right? There's artists that we purchase from, um, but I would say that uh, the artist that I most closely work with yeah. is the person who designed this uh, yeah. our, our logo <laughs> yeah. itself. It's cool. um, his name's Chris. He does his own like character and stuff like that there. There yeah. you go. Um, but uh, he's awesome yeah. artist, designer. Yeah. I've watched him grow from nothing to you know something, yeah. and <laughs> hopefully he can take our brand to ne the next, next level. level so. No, absolutely. That's that's pretty cool. I like your unique uh, branding, right? It's very interesting and <laughs> yeah. makes you guys stand out, yeah. essentially. Um, and so, kind of shifting gears here. In terms of you know, you guys are a retail location. Obviously, you could sell it online. So can you kind of tell us more about the whole how you just handle the pandemic? Right, because a lot of businesses, yeah. they were struggling. Some of them shut down, unfortunately. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so what did you guys do and how did you guys kind yeah, of- Yeah, so for pandemic, actually, I mean, I don't want to gloat, but we did very, very, very well. Yeah. Um, I think it was a combination of, you know, people being at home with not much to do. So they just wanted to collect cool things and we had the means to do that. Yeah. Um, but because we couldn't open the store and the doors to the public, what we did was um, we went online to live streaming, yeah. um, which was a big thing in Asia already. Yeah. But um, we wanted to do that. And now that we've done that, that's mm -hmm. actually like 50% of our business. Like the store is, I mean, it's always gonna be part of us, but yes. the live streaming is where we see our future. Yeah. It's great you talked about Markham, you talked about working with artists. Have you ever any collaborations with any other businesses at all or? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, since we did the new renovation here, we've been yeah. reaching out to a lot of local businesses. Yeah. So one is uh, Mackie Mart, it's just like a oh, yeah. hand roll, Japanese hand roll good. sushi place. Yeah. Good. Um, so we did some collaborations with them yeah. where we you know, they provide us rolls with like customized uh, stickers and hand rolls yeah. that we requested. Um, like actually specific special ones. Yeah. And, um, you know, they give us, you know, free coupons and we use them in our prizes. And, yeah. you know, in return, we drive them a lot of business that way. And um, the Alley, which is another, you know, bubble tea type uh, company, yeah. we, we in ex they, they give us prizes and we promote them and stuff like oh, that. Cool. So we do a lot of things like that. And yeah. um, we're going to be doing a lot more of that kind of thing with like food vendors and stuff like that. Cool. I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love eating food. So does my wife. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah it's fun. <laughs> okay, cool. So um, <laughs> last, last question, right? If you could tell yourself, you know, give yourself advice, you know, five years ago or 10 years ago when you first started this, like what kind of advice would that kind of be? Do less. <laughs> do less. Yeah, do less. Do less, right? Yeah, I think entrepreneurs tend to stack themselves with all these ideas and they want to execute on everything. But yeah. You can't. No. No, you, you have to do less and focus on the little things to, so that you have a more focused vision and yeah. uh, view and you end up spending less money and more time on perfecting one thing. Yeah, no, for sure. I appreciate it. Hey, so that's pretty much wraps it up, Chris. Um, how, do, how do people get a hold of you? Website? Email. Yeah, you can, yeah, they can go to mindseye.com. They can go to our Instagram. It's, uh, it's mindseye, M-I-N-D-Z-A-I. Yeah. Uh, or, or ZAI if you're American. <laughs> Oh awesome. yeah, yeah, that's where you can go. Awesome, man. I appreciate it. Thanks everybody for your time and uh, feel free to reach out to Chris. Take care, guys. <laughs>